Yo, yo, yo! Still sleeping? Wake up! Good morning, everyone! In this video, we are covering a very interesting topic, which is, wait for it, man electromechanical system resonators or NEMS resonators. So, let's get started with me, Mazin, and Ramsey. To know how it began, we've got to go back to 1959, but we don't have time machine. So let's just talk about it. In 1959, Richard Feynman offered a prize of 1000 USD to the first guy who can make and operate in electric motors in just only one over 64 inches cube. After that, the field of microelectromechanical systems caught up with Feynman's bet, achieved commercial production capabilities of motors many times smaller. First thing first, nano electromechanical systems field is all about how to integrate an electrical and mechanical device on the nano scale. And these days, the field of NEMS is used in many applications like aerospace, automotive, you can say sensors. And guess what? Biotechnology. And of course, instrumentation like the atomic force microscopy. And robotics. Not this one, it's not a robot, but it's nice. Oh, I guess it's nice. It is. Manufacturing and more of films. NEMS has three major functions sensing, actuation, and communication. The two basic properties of NEMS are mechanical element either deflects or vibrates in response to an applied force and transducer which converts a mechanical energy into an electrical or an optical signal and vice versa. NEMS resonator has three main applications, oscillators, filters, and sensors. NEMS resonator oscillators use ceramic instead of quartz crystals because of their low cost mechanical ruggedness and frequency stabilization in many applications and also ceramic provides small size in order to achieve fabrication on nanoscale which is our main goal. NEMS resonator filter is a device that provides frequency selectivity in mobile and satellite communications, radar, remote sensing systems and much more applications it also can operate at microwave frequencies. NEMS resonator sensor is a device that blue shifts its natural frequency when there are any changes in the physical surrounding. So guys, here I leave you with my friend Mazen to tell you his story about carbon nanotubes. Hope you enjoy it. Resonance frequency changes of single wall carbon nanotube of nano electromechanical resonators tuned by cheer strain. Why do we need to take into consideration carbon nanotubes promising potential? It's a promising material for nano electronics, nano devices and nano composite. Applied in all fields of science and engineering to a nano scale for sensors, actuators, resonators, motors, engines, filters, memory and switching devices and many applications where a desired frequency is required. To tune the frequency of carbon nanotube resonators through tension, molecular dynamics, MD simulation based on of burners potential to model the tuning of nanotube resonators by adjusting the rotation angle using shear strain induced tension, SSIT, that originated purely from mechanical coupling to adjust the resonance frequency with a temperature set to 1K. How was it done? Double wall carbon nanotube was used as the core element in which the outer wall was stripped out 
by selective etching. While a part of it is embedded within a node is not stripped out length for guarding the vibration, the left edge is fixed, whereas the right edge is connected to a rotation angle controller. In order to achieve the desired vibration frequency by changing the rotation angle. The figure here shows the actual vibration length L lies between the two fixed nodes, and hence the length of the single wall carbon nanotube, two R shell single wall carbon nanotube, five zero and 3-3 were used with the actual vibration lengths LV to be 5 nanometers and 10 nanometers set to be greater than the actual vibration lengths the actual vibration length remained constant during all simulations performed in this work all interactions between the carbon atoms that formed covalent bond with carbon nanotubes were modeled accordingly to investigate the dynamic oscillations of the cantilevered single wall carbon nanotube they were left to oscillate freely upon removal of bending force external force were performed along the transverse direction the right edge was rotated until the rotation angle reached 360 then plots were drawn of the total potential energy as a function of the rotation angle for the 5-0 and the 3-3 single wall carbon nanotubes with length then the tension as a function of the rotation angle were also plotted in the same way. Taking into consideration the total potential energy as the function of the rotation angle, it was seen that the length of the single wall carbon nanotubes were slightly shortened by increasing the shear strain until it reaches a critical point. Whereas the tension as a function of the rotation angle, it was seen that the rotation angle increases, the tension decreases. And this was due to compressional increasing and this was a good result as compared to previously conducted experiments. Next, taking into consideration the resonance frequency as the function of rotation angle. As the length of the single wall carbon nanotubes were shortened by increasing shear strain until it reaches a critical point of 60 degrees per nanometer. Therefore, all simulations after this were conducted with a rotation angle less than 240 degrees. Also, we can see that the resonance frequency decreased with increasing angle. Finally, the bandwidth of the 3 carbon nanotube was found to be higher than the 5-0 at low temperature as shown by displacement of the resonator. These plots could show the peak of the fundamental frequency that can be explicitly detected. Lastly, we showed that the resonance frequency of the single wall carbon nanotubes were adjusted by controlling the rotation angle of the edge. While one can still expect the quality factor to be greatly decreased with increasing temperature, for an example, in a study of a cantilevered single wall carbon nanotube beam oscillator as in our example. In this experiment, we will try to get better understanding on graphene-based electrically actuated and detected resonators, as well as the challenges in realizing strain-engineered graphene devices by varying the frequency of graphene resonators at constant temperature. Strain engineering of graphene is then achieved by the mismatch between the negative thermal expansion of graphene and the positive thermal expansion of the substrate. Graphene. So most of you must be wondering, why is graphene the material of choice? Well, the answer is simple. Graphene is well known for having an outstanding properties that puts it ahead of other materials, such as high end modulus, which is capable of bringing high resolution to the system. Not to mention that graphene also has high elasticity, which means that it can get back to its initial size after strain, and it is also known to be very conductive material. All these properties, and many more, makes graphene an ideal candidate for men's devices for the simulation method. Molecular dynamic simulation is done to explore graphene resonators with ultra-sensitive sensors. The resonance frequency of the suspended graphene is modeled using the average tension induced by the axial strain and the gate force. The first step in this experiment is to clamp both sides of the graphene nano-rebound as shown in the graph below. 
The graphene nanoribbons has an armchair edge with a width of 0.7 nanometers and a length of 14.1 nanometers. Secondly, graphene was relaxed without external force, followed by the actuation of the graphene nanoribbon by applying an external gate force that can be induced by electrostatic capacitive force. Then, the resonance frequency of the oscillations were calculated using Fourier transform. Throughout the experiment, the temperature was set to 1 Kelvin, and it was controlled using the Gunstern thermostat. And finally, the simulation step time was set to 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 picoseconds. Tension versus strain. The graph shows that the tension linearly increases with increasing the axial strain for a permittivity less than 10%, whereas the rate of increase of the tension decreases with the axial strain for a permittivity bigger than 10%. Resonance frequency versus applied voltage. This graph shows the resonance frequency as a function of the applied gate force for different initial strain. From the graph, we can see that as the initial strain increases, the relation between the applied gate force and the resonance frequency changes as their correlation decreases with the increase in initial strain. Finally, by relating the results, we could tell that the resonance frequency of the graphene resonators was very closely related to the average tension, and we saw that the initial strain induced tension could be adjusted by the mismatch of thermal expansion coefficient. On the other hand, the deflection induced tension could be controlled by the electrostatic capacitive force due to the gate voltage. We have also concluded that...